السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful my brothers and sisters yes we speak about preparing for the day we are going to die with this virus around and so many people losing their lives obviously we now know for certain and we always knew but it's reassured it's reconfirmed that there doesn't need to be something majorly wrong with you for you to suddenly die you know before it would be an accident and so on now the sudden death that was prophesized by the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wherein he said closer to the hour and the end of times people will die suddenly you know you hear of a person who's there and then he's not there so yes with this virus around it's become much more important for us to be ready at any time to pass away or to meet with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is something very very important the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us to prepare for death now how do i prepare i want to prepare for the day that i'm going to meet with allah yes the best thing you could do is your deeds your good deeds seeking forgiveness of allah is probably the best thing so you constantly ask allah's forgiveness oh allah forgive my shortcomings oh allah grant me paradise that's another way oh allah help me to become a better person that's there but together with the prayer and together with seeking forgiveness you must change something in your life you must make sure that you have adopted goodness and you have quit bad so as the days pass you have improved as a person but now i want to know more about certain things that i will do now the reward of which will continue even beyond my death are there things like that the answer is yes the famous narration idha mata ibn adam an qata anhu amaluhu illa min thalath ilm yuntafa'u bih aw aw sadaqatun jariya aw walad salih yad'u lahu if a person passes away then all his deeds and are cut off from him except three types of deeds and the three are mentioned in brief in brief in that narration that we all know which is a common narration uh, the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says knowledge that the person has left or a charity that the person has given where the benefit of that charity uh, outlives the person himself and thirdly a child whom you've given a good upbringing to such that uh, they pray for you and your forgiveness later on now this charity is speaking about you having given the charity in your life when you were alive we have a habit of saying oh let me give a charity on behalf of the dead i'm not saying that's wrong but what i am saying is surely that as much as you want to do that for someone who's passed away what are you doing for yourself as well have you given charities in your life now this hadith that i spoke about the three things that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says those are the three things that are going to benefit you after you've died okay there are other narrations that elaborate on the details of these three things and that's what i want to share with you today because it's very important there's a hadith of anas bin malik radhiyallahu anhu that is classified as good and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has explained these three things by saying there are seven things now between the 3 and the 7 there's no contradiction because the 3 are in brief and the 7 is greater detail and there is another narration that also makes 7 uh, may mention of 7 and there is there is a slight difference not because there is a contradiction but you you will see it's an explanation of it okay so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says there are seven things the reward of which will continue for a slave after he's passed away in his grave number 1 knowledge that he taught someone you taught someone some goodness for and then they taught someone else and they taught someone else for as long as that chain continues you continue to get a full reward for anyone who's benefited from that knowledge the scary part is if you've taught someone nonsense and you've taught someone something evil and bad then you would actually uh, incur the sin as well so let's make sure we teach people good things and especially when it comes to religious knowledge imagine teaching them the quran what more do you want for every letter you're going to get a reward okay so ilmun allama okay and then he says or a person who has uh, you know dug a river made it flow you made a river flow you know you commissioned or established the river 
So to actually do that, to give people water and to make sure that you have contributed in this way is very rewarding. For as long as that river is flowing, you will continue to get a reward for everybody who benefited from it. And uh, inshallah, it's going to continue way beyond your date of death. The third thing, a person who sinks a well, so a borehole or a tube well or a well, for as long as that uh, is going to last, you'll get a reward. So when we say sadaqa jariya, this is all part of sadaqa jariya. One is knowledge. It's mentioned in the hadith of the three. Like I told you, these are just details. And then he speaks about the, the river. And now he is saying uh, the, the well. So if you have sunk a well for the people, and they benefit from it. It may stop after a year or two. Normally, nowadays, in many countries, a well is not something they're looking forward to. They're looking forward to a borehole, which costs much more, but it lasts far longer. A borehole may last for 20 years, 10 years, perhaps more, but a well is seasonal. And sometimes these wells dry up. I know I come from Zimbabwe, and back where I come from, sometimes a well dries up in, in a short time and a well can only benefit a small community, very small, a few houses, whereas a borehole can benefit a broader uh, you know, number of people, a larger number of people, a broader cross-section of the community. So uh, it's important for you to decide which one am I going to do. It don't always go for the cheaper thing. You know, we look at the charities and we say, okay, here's Abdullah Aid, I'm going to go for a well. Ask them, do you do boreholes? If you do bore, what's the cost? Ah, it's very expensive. Can you afford it? If you can, well, the more you're obviously going to have a longer reward for a longer time because it's going to last longer. If you're doing a well, alhamdulillah, are you going to follow up with that well? Are you going to make sure that it's carrying on? Because sometimes a year later, two years later, most wells dry up and a lot of wells are seasonal. When the water table comes up, there's water. When it doesn't, there's no water. So, that is uh, one of the things mentioned. Uh, the fourth thing mentioned here is someone who plants a tree. Obviously, you'll get a reward for as long as someone's benefiting from that tree or the birds or anything else that's benefiting. If it's a fruit tree, then the fruit as well or the shade or both. Awbana masjidan, a person who builds a masjid for the sake of Allah. So that's like a big deal, mashallah. That is going to benefit you after you die in your grave, okay? Awwarratha mushafan, someone who bequeathed a mushaf. Mushaf means uh, that upon which the Quran is written. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it used to be on skins and little parchments and perhaps uh, planks of wood and so on. So that's, that was called mushaf. Nowadays, when we say mushaf, the mind goes straight to the, you know, the Quran. So if you're going to print Qurans and distribute them, it will help you. You know, and you can do the translation Quran, so you have the Arabic on one side and the, the English on the other side. And actually, it continues to uh, any books which explain the Quran as well, and uh, they have the Quran written in there. And uh, the last one mentioned in this narration of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, uh, or a person who leaves a child who's uh, going to make dua for them and seek forgiveness for them after they've died. So when your child seeks forgiveness for you after you have died, it's going to help you for a long, long time, for as long as they continue. Now, that is the narration of Anas ibn Malik. I want to, uh, before I end, I want to mention another narration that I love, which is very similar in meaning. May Allah strengthen us to choose what we want to do, and we try and do all of these things. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates in a hadith uh, that is also very, very interested, uh, very interesting, reported in Sunan Ibn Majah, also said to be uh, correct, meaning said to be a good hadith, because it's explaining the other one of the three. إِنَّ مِمَّا يَلْحَقُ الْمُؤْمِنِ مِنْ عَمَلِهِ وَحَسَنَاتِهِ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهِ Indeed, from among the things that would actually uh, benefit the deceased person uh, from amongst his deeds and, and you know, his uh, actions, after his death, so what would benefit him after his death, Ilman Knowledge that he taught and he spread. So 
to, to beam the knowledge, be it on the internet, be it anywhere. Nashara, who means to spread the knowledge. You know something, you taught it. You taught it to people how? I taught it by, with books. I taught it by printing books and distributing them. I taught it with lectures. I taught it with online. I taught it by reminding people, by reposting what someone's posted for as long as it's permissible to do that and they don't mind and, and so much more. So any knowledge that you have taught others or you have spread all of it is going to benefit you after your death a pious child that you leave behind the idea is that child is going to do good and you get a reward for every good that the child does and on top of that the child will seek your forgiveness when your child seeks your forgiveness Allah will benefit you from that dua and your status will be elevated Mushafan warrathahu the third one is again the Mushaf we spoke about it uh, the Quran uh, that you would actually bequeath to someone. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it was parchments and it had there were skins where they wrote it, wrote it on and so on. Nowadays, it's just uh, printed, mashallah, tabarakallah. So anything that's beneficial, you will benefit from it. If it's the Mus'haf, it's even greater. It's mentioned separately. Aw masjid and banahu, the building of a masjid. We spoke about that. Aw baytan libni sabili banah. Or to build a home or a house for a stranded person, for the person who is underprivileged. So you have underprivileged people and you have a housing project. Or you built a house for someone, gave it to them. Allah will build you a house. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. It's amazing. And why I love this is because the details help us in the various scenarios that we we are trying to help other people in. And it's so reassuring to know that this is going to last for a long, long time. So the hadith says, O Baytan, Libni Sabili Bana. Or the house for a, a one who is stranded. You know, Libni Sabili is a person who's stranded, maybe a street kid, someone who's underprivileged, uh, someone who's lost, a traveler, etc. If you build a house for someone who doesn't have it and you give it to them, it's theirs now, no longer mine. Allah will build you definitely something good. In fact, you'll get a full reward for everyone who benefited from that house. That's, that's more accurate. أو نهرا أجراه a person who's commissioned a river uh, maybe they dug it they were involved in in uh, making it come about you know they established the river they dug it they and so on so that you will benefit from it in a very very big way for as long as the water is flowing we spoke about it in the previous hadith and the last thing here mentioned is صدقة أخرجها من ماله في صحته وحياته يلحقه من بعد موته The charity that he gave in his life while he was healthy will actually help him after his death. So now you want to know, I do charities on behalf of dead people. I'm not saying it's not allowed, but the true charity was what the person gave when they were alive and and healthy and they gave the charity. That will definitely benefit you. It's called Sadaqa Jariya. You know, that which is going to benefit you for a long, long time to come. Because you gave money in a way for anything. You gave money in a way. Say you gave money for somebody's education. You gave somebody for, you gave, that's a charity. You gave money for uh, somebody's anything, you know. For as long as that particular item is continuing, you will have a reward. The day it stops, the reward stops. But Allah will had already given you such a big reward. So we ask Allah to help us to achieve paradise. And this is these are just a few tips of how to prepare for the day that you're going to pass away and the day you're going to meet with Allah. Beyond what we've always heard, this is important because it will continue uh, well after you've passed on. May Allah grant us paradise. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.